uh, I'll wait for a few seconds. The Seeds of Immortality with Dr. Stan Gross. As knowledge with regard to the effects of food upon man increases, it is more than conceivable that the races that first avail themselves of the new values of nutrition may decrease the handicaps of disease, lengthen their lives, and so become the leaders of the future by Victor B. Heiser. When I look at this quote, folks, I just look at, I, I think, how apt, what a great way to begin our presentation uh, tonight. My name is Dr. David Ajibadi, and I'm, I'm your co-host uh, tonight, along with Sherry Platt, whom you heard earlier on. And our goal, like we mentioned earlier, is to give people the fundamentals, help people understand how health works. And of course, the most important, the absolute number one thing that you've got to understand is how your body and your mind work. And of course, when you understand that, you will better understand what your body needs, what the threats are to your health, and when you do need medical attention, you will be able to better work with your health care provider. When you understand these things, like we said earlier, you will be better be able to understand how to live a longer, healthier life. But also, when you understand these things, you will be more open to the wonderful technologies that have just been exploding in our world today, the wonderful nutritional technologies, things that help to do to, pro to protect your, your brain, to protect your cardiovascular system, to improve function in your body. These wonderful things that are just being developed, and I have to say this, that our presentation today is absolutely one of them, and I've been so impressed with the technology as it has been presented, and as I've, I've studied, I actually traveled all the way about <laughs> four hours to go study and to hear the doctors talk about this technology, and uh, the people who have made this happen, who first of all introduced, uh, mentioned this to me, obviously, I, I want to say a special thank you to Jimmy and Jason Kelly, Jimmy Izell, Jason Kelly, and of course, Kevin Moment, who has been a very good friend of mine for many years now, and he actually drove several hours to come speak to Sherry and me. Sherry, Sherry, uh, Sherry was in Tulsa a couple of months ago, and so um, Kevin came over and he came and, he came and talked to us about this new seed technology, and so knowing that we like to give our, our viewers and participants the absolute best, uh, they, they, they brought this over. So I'm very, very grateful. We are very, very grateful to them for, for bringing this over and uh, very, very grateful that Dr. Stan could make time out of his busy schedule to, to, to do this presentation. I've looked at the slides and I'm excited about what's coming up. So uh, without much further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Sherry to introduce our host, our presenter. Okay, thank you, David. Dr. Gross is a 1988 graduate of Logan University. He has practiced in the St. Charles County region for over 20 years, specializing in family chiropractic care, nutritional therapies, and traditional Chinese medicine. He is a fellow of Acupuncture Association of America and board certified in acupuncture and meridian therapy. His background includes Ph.D. programs in biophysics from MIT, biomedical engineering from Harvard, and bioethics from Tufts University. Wow, that's impressive right there. Dr. Gross has published a book through Simon & Schulster entitled The Physician Within, which is in its current second edition of printing. He has published over 72 peer-reviewed professional periodicals. He is currently working on a comprehensive cookbook um, featuring healthy ingredients for classic family recipes. I talked with him a little bit about that before the program, and I'm personally excited about that coming out. Dr. Gross is a featured lecturer and instructor for the Missouri State Chiropractic Association and serves as adjunct instructor for Logan University in the postdoctoral studies department. 
Dr. Gross holds seven patents on various supplement formulas and another four on animal supplementation, including equine, canine, and feline species. Dr. Gross has been named and published in Who's Who's for his work in healthcare, clinical research, and alternative medicine. He has been featured in six different categories. He is a member of the National Science Institute for the Advancement of Natural Medicine and is a fellow in the Physicians Against World Hunger. I had my first conversation with him today and he sounds like a really, really nice guy on top of all of this amazing resume that he has. So I will echo what David said. Dr. Gross, thank you so much for being here and we will hand it over to you. Oh my goodness. I really have to be good now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I told you before you didn't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, David, for giving me this honor. You know, for me, uh, giving the responsibility and the control of health back to the patient is really the key uh, to true healing because if if health is strictly the responsibility of the physician, uh, not too many people will survive. Uh, and furthermore, the quality of life will, will be certainly less if we expect only the doctor to be able to regulate and control how we live and how healthy we are. That, that falls back into the hands of the individuals, and that's why I, I'm very excited about this technology, this, this new supplemental approach to health. And it's called the seeds of immortality. You, you could have reversed it. I could have said the immortality of the seeds. It's making the best of what nature has given because, as you'll see, the true power of every plant lies in its seeds. If you think about that, that makes sense, doesn't it? The material provided by nature allows a plant to successfully replicate, allowing the species to continue from generation to generation. The fuel that allows the process to continue includes special proteins, carbohydrates, essential fatty acids, all neatly bound within the seed. The seed has it all. You think about it, that's how the plant will survive. The flagship product of Rain Nutrition, which is the company who has uh, come up with this tremendous product, is called Soul. And every packet or bottle of Soul contains black cumin seed, black raspberry seed, Chardonnay grapeseed, all extracted using a soft cold press technique without heat or chemical extraction. You have to be careful because when we're told that something is an extract, we assume that it's healthy. Well, not all extraction processes are healthy. There are chemical extractions or heat extractions where a great number of the essential nutrients are destroyed in the process. I'm not sure in this particular case. This is cold and, and gentle process of removing uh, the, the nutrient from the seed and then using the seed itself to form a, a flower, what's called a seed flower, where the, the entire content is ground up because there's, uh, there's a lot of nutrient within that as well. The result of the formula containing a raw essence of the nutrition reserved for the seed itself, the same nutrient level that supports the seed through the life cycle of the plant has been harvested for the benefit of humanity. Think about this. Every plant that has a seed within it, not all plants have seeds, obviously some are spores, some use other means, but think of the seed, seeded plant, think of the grape. As the grape hangs on the vine, the seed is within. If we don't harvest it, it falls from the vine, falls to the ground. And the pulp and the fruit and the skin around it and even the stem itself decay and, and attrition takes place. The ripening turns to decay. But what survives through that process is the seed, and the process of this change actually nourishes the seed so that, that it lies on the ground, it actually germinates seeds and produces a new plant. It's, it's a miracle, it's wonderful, and we understand the mechanism, but yet we stand in awe of it. That same power has been harvested in this supplementation. Black cumin seeds are typically harvested for their oils. It's a very popular oil in the Middle East and Asia. Black cumin has been touted to possess healing qualities of a wide variety of ailments according to folklore. And folk medicine is very important as we look back on some of the folk remedies. We're starting to see, yeah, I'm not sure if this really works scientifically, 
but my goodness, it's been used for years, and look what it's done for folks. So we look at this from a empirical view, where we see where years and years and years of using a substance, and then we scientifically analyze it. And we see there's powerful antioxidants called proanthroanthocyanidines. And you might just abbreviate that to OPCs if you want, because that's just another category. And they're both fat and water soluble. And that's important because our body is made up of more than just water. It's made up of fat and proteins. So we need a means of getting it into the tissues, right? <laughs> Johan Auschwitz uh, published a significant finding regarding the specific paranthosanidine molecule, resveratrol. And we've all probably heard of resveratrol. It's very popular right now. In the scientific journal Cell, Auschwitz reported significant markers in the cell matrix in the administration of resveratrol. The extent of the effects were measured on several animal and human controlled studies at the Institute of Genetics and Molecular Cell Biology in Neilkirch, France. The most profound finding involved the activation of the sirtuin-1 gene. This is so important, folks. Sirtuin-1, if you're looking at it, and genetics is, is a, a wonderful field, and it's actually relatively new. And we're starting to find different markers every day. But the, but the sirtuin gene, especially sirtuin-1, is called the longevity gene. This is the one where we look at animals, and then we do experimentation with animals as we trigger this gene. We see that we can extend the life, but not just the life, but the energetics through that life. So we have um, you know, laboratory mice or rats that actually live longer with greater vitality. The way this is typically triggered is through calorie restriction. We know that if we reduce the calories of an animal by one-third, we can probably increase the longevity of that animal by one-third. But you know if you restrict calorie from an animal, are you increasing the quality of the animal's life? Not necessarily because the animal feels a sense of hunger. In taking resveratrol at a specific level, we can actually trigger this gene, increase metabolism, and increase the quality and possibly even the longevity of life. It, it was certainly true of laboratory animals. <laughs> Once the mitochondria transport of RNA to the cell nucleus, sirtuin-1 markers replicated within the DNA of the cell. That means that that triggering mechanism is not just carried on through one reaction, it's replicated within the nucleus, and as that is spread, of course, cells replicate. And they also send the mitochondria to other cells. So this information, or this triggering mechanism, is shared from one cell to the next cell to the next cell. For the individual, this means a reduction in degenerative changes for the slowing of the aging process. That's important. Most of us are looking for the fountain of youth. As far as the length of life, that's not as important to most of us as a quality of life. So as we look at these control groups, is it important that they live longer? Yeah, sure, because we don't like to do that. But would we like to live stronger? Would we like to have increased metabolic activity? Would we like to have more vitality and strength to our cells, our organs, our tissues? Absolutely. And that's what this study implicates. For an individual, this means a reduction in degenerative changes or the slowing of the aging process. The experiment in laboratory mice measured a 30% increase in life expectancy over 93% of the control group. That's significant. The same pathway demonstrated in laboratory mice is common among all mammals. And you and I, everyone listening here tonight, is a mammal. At least I hope so. If there are reptiles out there, chime in, will you? <laughs> While medical, While medical college, college at Cornell University reported the significant findings using resveratrol to reduce plaque formation in the brain by binding the oxidative process associated with beta amyloid deposits. And for those of us who've studied brain chemistry, we understand that the beta amyloid deposits are responsible for drawing in multiple mineral layers over areas like the hippocampus or other areas in the midbrain. And this mineralization or placking can lead to other neurodegenerative problems in the medial cortex, hypothalamus, and the striatum of the brains in laboratory mice, but, but also in humans, right? We're looking at dementias. We're looking at uh, uh, different 
neurological problems that, that plague humanity, we seem to be seeing more and more and more of it. The dementia, ALS, multiple sclerosis have been linked to amyloid plaquing in the brain. While far from a cure, the use of resveratrol can certainly contribute to symptom regulation and perhaps retard the progression by chelating copper and other heavy metal deposits associated with neurodegenerative processes. We're not saying this is a cure. Certainly there's no cure on the horizon. And you know, truth be told, as physicians, we're not really in the cure business. We're in the healthcare management business. Uh, it'd be nice to say we had a cure for all these different things, but uh, the truth, truth is we're more looking into increasing the quality of life in maintaining and preventing disease as opposed to uh, curing it. And that's really what our job's supposed to be. Recent studies published in the British Journal of Pharmacology suggest that specific OPCs, including resveratrol and pycnogenol, with all other polyphenol molecules, may benefit pain sufferers. Until recently, only a few natural substances had been le linked to the COX-2 inhibition and the reduction of arachidonic acid. Dr. Su Tsai performed several studies on laboratory rats in, with induced pain in their rear paw. Now, when you think about COX-2 inhibitors, we're thinking about uh, pharmaceuticals like, like Celebrex and, and other smart aspirins out there, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They have some pretty severe side effects for some folks. If we can find a natural source to make this happen, uh, how much better would people be who suffer from chronic pain and inflammation, or even acute pain and inflammation? The mechanistic response were linked to the reduction of uh, nitric oxide synthase, which is linked to nociceptive receptor su suppression. Say that fast, way. In other words, the chemicals most often associated with pain and inflammation are suppressed, thus decreasing both pain and inflammation. Dr. Sao and others completed a comprehensive controlled study in 2011 and expect to be published in 2013. And I can't wait to read it because what this says is that something as readily available as resveratrol or pycnogenol uh, could actually be used at specific dosages to reduce inflammation without harmful side effects. Again, not a cure, but a management. The most popular claim to fame for resveratrol, we all know about this one, are OPCs, polyphenols, is associated with red wine. We all heard about the study. This happened about 20 years ago, where we were told that you know a glass of red wine a day would help with our heart and our vascular system. And the French reported much lower incidence in cardiovascular disease than other European countries, and certainly much better than Americans. In America, we suffer from what I call the SAD syndrome. SAD is a standard American diet. And, you know, it's, it's, we are the most overfed and undernourished people on the planet. And those of you listening in Southeast Asia, you're probably laughing because you know, you see pictures on television. We're big people. We're way too big, way too big for our own good. So as a result, we suffer a lot more cardiovascular disease, a lot more diabetes, a lot more metabolic issues. And the French are probably laughing as well because they eat very rich foods. <clears throat> Mealtime is a celebration, and they have the red wine, and they don't suffer the same effects. The interesting thing is that a glass of wine only delivers 960 micrograms of resveratrol. Really not enough to make a difference in the blood. At least you wouldn't think so, but it certainly showed up from empirical evidence, and it's called the French paradox. It just didn't make sense scientifically that that much antioxidant would make a difference. Dr. Zachary Ungabari published in the American Journal of Physiology, Heart Circulation, the study clearly indicating resveratrol and pycnogenol significant, significantly reduced oxidative stress in cardiovascular tissues. He suggested that the most bioavailable dosage would be no less than 1,000 milligrams per one gram of liquid solution. So the flagship of brain nutrition offers an impressive array of antioxidant at dosages administration most effective and bioavailable. It includes resveratrol, pycnogenol, uh, to uh, tocopherols, essential fatty acids, D-ribose, and other natural antioxidants including uh, carotenoids. 
all gently extracted from seeds, making the powerful ingredient in the entire rain product line the most bioavailable bio form of antioxidant available without a prescription. While other products offer the juice from the fruit pulp, the powerhouse in nutrition from all plant life is concentrated in the seed. I think that's just common sense. The seed contains the true concentration of life-giving nutrient at levels far beyond the pulp, rind, skin, or stem. Dosage administration issues. And here's, here's always the problem, right? We can, we can tout that a, a specific, specific sub and a reaction. reaction. And then we can take it in a pill form or a capsule form, and we can see that it has uh, an effect. But the, the, from a biochemical standpoint, there, there's an issue we need to take into consideration, and that is bioavailability. The standardized dosage administration of most OPCs and supportive antioxidants, anywhere from 50 milligrams to 200. In some cases, I've seen on the Internet upwards to even 500 milligrams uh, per tablet or capsule. The problem with compressive extractions or synthetics is bioavailability due to a chemical process called conjugation. Most of us who studied our biochemistry understand that when you take a substance into the body and it hits the stomach acid and it faces the enzymes, it's no longer the substance that you swallowed. It becomes something else uh, because it has to be bound to something, right? It has to go through a reaction. And in some cases, as a result, it loses its primary target, right? A 500 milligram dosage is an antioxidant is reduced in the presence of stomach acid and bound to organic sulfur calcium ions. Um, hold on, I got a little glitch. There we go. There we go. As a result, less than 1% of the blood sweat, as a whole food sold or brush, or administered liquid, liquid form, form, consistent of a puree of seed flowers combined with natural fruit flavors. David, did you have a question? Um, yes, I, I, I did. Um, I hate to bring you back, but uh, the, I think two slides back, you said uh, the, the part that said the, the seed has more than the pulp and the, the fruit itself. How could we uh, have missed that all these years? I mean, most of us have always believed the seed, well, the seed is to, for, to, to grow the plant and eventually produce fruits in which the real nutrition is. So, <laughs> so I mean, but now it makes sense, though. I mean, it's out of the seed that everything is produced. But how, how could we have missed this? Actually, actually it wasn't, wasn't really, really, really missed. Yeah, it was so actually it was part, of part of the technology of nutrition, nutrition early, early, early on. on. If you're looking at a marketing perspective, perspective the skin, the skin and, the and the pulp of the fruit, of the fruit has, has better, better delivery, delivery system from, from a palatability point of view. Uh, right, right. And the seed is bitter. The seed from most plants are, are very bitter. So it's extremely, extremely difficult to, to convince someone that, someone that taking in the seeds is the best way, the best way to get the nutrition when the fruit, fruit, the fruit itself tastes better. Tastes better. <laughs> mm -hmm. From a, from from a, from a, a phytochemical chemical standpoint, standpoint, from a, from a uh, supplemental standpoint, uh, seeds have been part of, of nutrition, but they haven't been really formulated into a specific uh, supplement isolated like this, at least that I've never seen before. I have seen some of the ancient recipes from Native Americans, and I've also seen and studying traditional Chinese medicine, uh, some of the seed remedies that were put together 4,000 years ago. Uh, this is not a new technology. Uh, this is a resurrected technology. This is, this is something that has uh, been part of uh, human uh, supplementation and human healing for, for centuries. This particular product just happened to put together the most, uh, I guess, most researched and investigated antioxidants uh, that, that have been touted for their health benefits in a form that is more available to the body, to the tissues. See. Does that help? Yes, it does. Okay, thanks. And if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to jump in. I'm, I'm not a strict uh, 
uh, hear me and listen and ask questions later. If you have a question, chime, feel free to chime in or, or type in your question however you need to do it. Did I miss one? Let me check. Previous. Yeah, here we go. The result is a much higher bioavailability rating. Barr and Sinclair published their findings in the National Review of Drug Discoveries resveratrol at a bioavailability percentage of 27 to 68 and delivered in liquid suspension. We couldn't have said it better. If, if you think about how the body handles things, if you have to break down a capsule, break down a tablet, the, the conjugated processes are going to destroy part of the original intent. If it's in solution form, uh, the bioavailability rating is much greater, much higher. At the inner membrane of the lipid layers of the mitochondria, the very specific markers that tr trigger microphage activities when the cell is damaged or under attack. It is the most ex uh, elemental immune triggering mechanism of the body. When this layer becomes damaged or invaded, the genetic materials inside the strands become separated or altered. This process is common when the body is attacked by viruses, bacteria, oxidative stress due to chemical assault, typically from lifestyle or pollution. You think about everything that we take into our bodies, the air we breathe, the, the food, the, the drink, and if, we, if we're not real careful, we can take in things into our body that can damage cells. And how does it do that? Well, it, it doesn't go in and bombard the cell directly. It's typically carried in through the mitochondria and part of the, the, the RNA, the ribonucleic acid. This is how viruses attack us. This is how uh, bacteria destroys a cell. This is how mutation takes place for cancers to be developed. It's all on this level. By reducing oxidative stress at the mitochondria level, the antioxidants found in rain products prevent the damage from occurring and aid and or aid in repair of the damaged gene strands. Uh, Doherty and others documented the effects on in vitro mice infected with herpes zoster virus and demonstrated a complete arrest of viral activities in the cell using high dosages of, of res, resveratrol. And by high dosages, uh, comparatively 500 milligrams per 80 kilogram of body weight. So if you, if you want to use your algebra, I hated algebra, but <laughs> I, I seem to be finding myself having to use it as I look at some of these uh, measurements. And then you measure the weight of the mouse and you alter the, the dosage based upon that weight. The implication for antiviral qual uh, qualities is compelling. Who can benefit from salt? Well, because rain products are totally natural and outside the complexity of pharmaceutical chemicals, we cannot claim to cure or treat disease. In truth, soul is, is beneficial for all manifestations of oxidative stress in the body. We can fully claim without hesitation that soul and all other brain nutrition products support the body's natural ability to defend and repair itself. That's true of every nutrient you take into your body. That's true every time you sit down to a meal and eat healthy food. Everything you take into your body helps your body defend itself. Because what is health? Health is our body's ability to, to cope with its environment, both internal and external. So disease is our body's inability to cope. By taking in a supplemental antioxidant, such as the RAIN product, such as Soul, you're increasing your body's capability to defend itself and cope. <coughs> Excuse me. Who can benefit from soul? The research studies mentioned in this presentation su suggest a wide application for soul and rest. There are more studies being published weekly and evidence becoming clear that supplementation to reduce oxidative stress is a sound decision to support and maintain good health. Who can really benefit from soul? Anyone suffering from the effects of living in a polluted, stressful, and often toxic world. Anyone wanting to regain their optimum health and maintain a higher quality of life. I think that's, that's true for all of us. I think that's what we're looking for. Do we really want to live longer or live better? The answer may be both, but 
but we would choose better any day. Anyone who's suffering from the effects of living in a polluted, stressful, and often toxic world, anyone wanting to regain their optimum health, or attempting to maintain a higher quality of life. That's the key, isn't it? Did I miss one again? Hold on. I have a, a trick finger. Differences in the seeds. No other product on the market that I'm aware of or I have seen, and I've researched this, offers such a comprehensive formula of seed nutrition. Far from a new idea, the use of seeds for promoting good health goes back to the na early Native Americans, the Greeks before them, and the Chinese before them. Of course, the Chinese believe that everything started there. The name of China is actually Zhongguo. Zhongguo means center of the universe, and, and they have a right to believe that because so many wonderful things came from China. The ancient kingdoms of, of Southeast Asia traded seeds like money, and the earliest documents written about health and healing from Central Africa speak of the healing power of seeds. It's part of our human history. We've been using seeds since our evolution began. It's a natural means of health. It's a natural means of food. Rain nutrition has taken an ancient concept and made it in the practical means of attaining good health. For healthcare providers, it's a conservative means of controlling the effects of oxidative stress without having to resort to harsh and potentially harmful drugs that often merely mask the symptoms and complicating the health goals and prolonging the disease process. Look, there are times when medication is necessary. We all understand that. If I have a runaway bacterial infection, please, please, please give me an antibiotic. But if I'm trying to maintain health, if I'm not treating disease but addressing health, this is an excellent place to start. But next? There are many more products available through Rain Nutrition, including a very simple but effective weight loss plan. And Lord knows we need a weight loss plan. How many people do you see walking around cannot see their shoes? We need to help one another. If you want to know more, check out with www.rainnutrition.com and select the products you want. Just look at it. There's a description on each one of the products categorically. There you'll find a comprehensive description of every product available. How can you get some product? The person that invited you to this webinar would be delighted to help you with an order. I'd like to thank everyone for attending. You know, it's it's a whole lot of fun to share, and it, it's it's a blessing to be able to be part of it. Uh, RainNutrition.com is the uh, the main Rain uh, website where you can find information. MyRain.me will tell you a little bit more about the company and and, and uh, some other information. If you'd like to send questions directly to me, I would more than entertain that. You can get it to my mailbox at myrain.me slash drstan. Uh, Kevin Mormon is such a tremendous man, and, and he helped put this whole thing together. And I would like to thank Kevin if he's, if he's online. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Kevin Mormon at windstream.net uh, website. For him, it is at uh, myrain.me slash building strength webinars. And I recommend you contact him, talk to him. He'd be more than happy to uh, address any issues regarding the product. Rain is a tremendous company and has, has a, a wonderful product. And I hope that I was able to share with you uh, some things that would, would help you understand the concept of, of, of seed nutrition. And, and I hope you had fun, and I hope I, I didn't put you to sleep. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stan. This, is, this has been very illuminating, and I'm sure there, there are going to be lots of questions. Already we have some thank yous coming in, but there are going to be lots of questions. What I want to do right now, folks, is I want to take, this, take the control back briefly and just show you a couple of things. Uh, while the questions are coming in, and I think Sherry Sherry is going to take uh, help ask many of the questions. Okay, um, I hope there isn't an echo because at last time there were, people were complaining about an echo. All right, folks. Uh, again, this is Dr. David, and and thank you again for joining us for, on this presentation uh, with Dr. Stan. Uh, Dr. Stan, thank you for even uh, mentioning Kevin. I wasn't sure you, uh, sure if you were going to do it, but about thank you, uh, Kevin. Yes, Kevin has done a tremendous job to help make this happen, especially and of course uh, along with Jimmy Izell 
and Jason Kelly. Uh, mm-hmm. good, uh, good people, good, good great friends. friends. Really great people, yes. I, I've, I've known them briefly, and uh, they are good people for sure. So we appreciate what they did. Um, uh, folks, a lot of work goes into these um, getting people like Dr. Stan on to do the presentation. He actually created this slice <laughs> because he was asked to do it on our platform. So um, um, a lot goes into this. And so some of you may be a little leery about, about uh, buying products or the, the, net, the, the selling aspect. But really, the truth is, without this this route, without going this route, many of these high, wonderful technologies would not reach the layperson. Many of them will be confined to uh, research centers, and they'll be stuck there for years and years and years. But this channel helps to bring important information and important technologies to people. And particularly, I'm I was particularly impressed with this because this came out of. Uh, how would we say? Uh, was it a doctor, uh, an oncologist? Actually, I think that's 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 what I heard. If that story is, if I heard right, was it a, a doctor? Idea, yes. Yeah, you want to tell that story, Doctor Stan? I'm really not all that that familiar with the 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 origins. That my introduction to the story was there was a uh, uh, a doctor who had uh, uh, patients who were looking for alternative means for treatment and. He wanted to find a, a, a way to support their immune system and and increase their their uh, quality of life. Understanding, of course, that that you know the typical oncological approach to uh, cancer uses intentionally uses oxidative chemicals. That's the whole idea. Uh, that that's how they work. So he wanted to be able to reverse some of that process by introducing uh, antioxidation therapy. And of course, most of those were derived from like grape skins, for instance, is where we first uh, started using resveratrol in this in this market. <clears throat> but later we found out that the seeds had a greater concentration. And through his initial work, uh, we were able to uh, derive the best possible combination of black cumin uh, the black raspberry uh, and the Chardonnay grape, all having some of the highest concentrations of antioxidants available out there. There are other plants that have higher uh, oxidation, antioxidation levels, but they're they're toxic. Uh, there, there's the plant that's used in uh, uh, Japan. <clears throat> it's actually a weed that grows there that is extremely high in resveratrol and uh, paranthrosanidines, but it, it's toxic. So by the time you remove the toxins, it's 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 uh, it's not useful. But I was very impressed with not just the product, but the motivation behind it. That that told me that the person had uh, his heart in the right place. Right, and um, especially because I have a background in oncology and in treating cancer patients, I saw the the the, the ravaging effect um, chemotherapy and radiotherapy, and of course. Many times there is a place for that, so we're not knocking it. But um, there, w- I saw then that there was a need to help support the body while they were going through, while the patient was going through this treatment, and just just weren't too many things out there that could do that well. So when I heard about this technology and how it all began, I was fascinated that uh, this that this could be well the vital keys to to uh, vital adjuncts, I would say, to to cancer treatment, to making cancer treatment a lot more successful. So. Um, very very interesting things. I'm I'm, I'm very I'm very impressed with what with with the with the technology and what this does. I just want to say really quickly before we go to the questions that um, folks, you can after this webinar, you can actually uh, Dr. Stan gave you his email address. But we also would love for you to go to our site and put your comments on the site. For instance, um, on, just by clicking on the banner the way I did, you can go there. You can put your comments, your questions. And let's have some conversation going. And Dr. Stan too can go to this site and uh, and and he can see what questions have come up and he can ask some of them for you. So we're hoping to get some kind of activity and some discussion and hopefully have your questions answered. Uh, the more you interact on these on these pages, and of course, if you would like to have access to the presentations and the uh, past presentations, you can also always be a member. But tonight's presentation, because I think it's so important, I think we will make this available for the weekend, free of charge for everyone. So you can always go back to the site, go back to our site, and watch this presentation. All you need, all you're going to need to do is just click on the banner, 
uh, on that banner and it will take you there. Okay, let's get back to the questions and so we can keep this keep the show going. <laughs> All right. Sherry, you have any questions there? Yes, there are yes, some there questions. Are some questions. Oh, David, can oh, you mute David, yourself? Can you mute yourself? Oh, okay, I will. Hang on. All right. Go ahead. Uh, have an echo. Okay. The first question is, is in the seeds, is glycemic is the glycemic index a factor? Actually, no. Uh, the seed itself uh, is is very very low in in carbohydrate, uh, especially the seeds in this particular product. To make it palatable, um, the seed mixture, the seed flowers are mixed with natural uh, flavors, fruit flavors, and sweetened uh, with uh, raw uh, cane sugar syrup uh, crystals. So, the still remaining on the low glycemic index. Uh, something, of course, had to be done to make it palatable. If you if you just took seed flowers and mixed it with water and took it, you would uh, probably not swallow it that easily. It doesn't taste that good. <laughs> so, because uh, it would be bitter. It would be bitter because of the, the uh, fatty acid content and because of the, the organic acids found within it. Okay. But, no, I, I would say that we're, we're looking at, uh, if you're looking at glycemic in, in indices, of say 30 or 40 being uh, natural fruits, this would probably fall in the 15 to 20 category. Okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to butt in again. I know Dr. S Dr. Stan mentioned this, but I want to reiterate it. It is very important, folks, that if you are interested in, in, in if you were invited by someone or referred to this presentation by someone, and you're interested in, in getting some soul or some rush for yourself, please get back with the person who invited you or referred you to this. Uh, this announcement about um, Kevin Mormon and his information is for those who were not referred by anybody or who were invited through the Building Strength webinars notification. So again, if you were invited by anyone else specifically, please get back with the person who invited you. Very, very, very important. We, we don't want to abuse this this platform in that way, so please get back with the person who bought you, who invited you. Uh, Sherry, back to you. Okay, go ahead and mute yourself again, David. Okay, so are the product, is the product uh, bottles of seeds? No, actually the, the product is, is uh, seed flowers, everything that's in the essence of the seeds ground up into a flower and mixed with a natural uh, fruit flavors and put into a solution. Uh, uh, there are two forms. One comes in a bottle. Uh, the bottle form is uh, less viscous, more more fluid, uh, but it has the same dosage administration as the packets, and the packets are a little bit thicker. I don't know if you've seen the energy drinks where you rip the top off and you, you squeeze it down. Yes. The, the flexible packs. <clears throat> that's that's how these are administered. So both in bottles and in, in packets. And Rush actually also comes in a, uh, a, a can form. It looks like a soda can, but it's, it's, it's uh, uh, like a health drink. Oh, okay. Yeah, speaking, speaking of the packaging, it's actually beautiful <laughs> the way everything is packaged. Here, here's a really good question. It says, I heard that there are some anti-inflammatory properties in black cumin. Is that true, and if so, how much? That's absolutely true. In fact, that's that's true of all of this, the uh, seed extracts found in rain products. <clears throat> black cumin in particular, uh, black cumin seed and black cumin oil extracts uh, have anti-inflammatory and uh, uh, there's some evidence that there's some COX-2 inhibition, so that uh, anti-inflammatory and analgesic effects uh, because it would uh, uh, suppress the nociceptors or the pain receptors and, and that would also suggest that uh, the oxidative process associated with uh, nociceptive responses because for, for that type of nerve to fire there has to be uh, an oxygen release. Uh, that, that that oxygen release is controlled through an antioxidation process. So yeah, black cumin is is a very, very powerful, powerful substance. It's been used for centuries. 
Okay, thank you. What levels of omega-3s are in one bottle of soul? That's an excellent question, and you know, uh, the, the, the true measurement on that, what I did was I had the product, when I was first introduced to it, I was the largest skeptic in the world, most religions <laughs> are, <clears throat> and I had it measured. I sent it off to uh, a laboratory and had it independently measured, and the essential fatty acid administration, uh, and we're talking about omega-3, uh, omega-6, and omega-9. Uh, from a plant source only. Now that that's interesting <clears throat> because we typically don't think of of threes and nines uh, coming a lot out of plant sources. So uh, we were looking at at 250 to 320 milligrams of essential fatty acids in that combination. Mm, okay. When people cannot take other anti-inflammatories due to digestive issues or a blood issue, is soul safe? Absolutely. Great. Okay, that's really if, if, if you think of this, it, it, it is food safe? Mm, mm -hmm. it, is fruit safe? You know, if, if, if you can't take an anti-inflammatory, a, a pharmaceutical, those are typically compounded together to do a specific reaction in the body. And some people are, are very sensitive to that. Um, and, and that's understood, especially some of the uh, uh, products out there that, that, that can, uh, some of the NSAIDs can cause stomach distress and so forth. Okay. But natural fruit extracts, natural seed extracts, I have never heard of an adverse reaction. Well, that's good news. Okay, here's another question about a, a type of blender. It says, what do you think of Blendtec blender for blending seeds and the whole food of seed nutrition? Is the process different from rain? Yeah, I've briefly heard of, of Blendtec, and, and I was one of the original Vitamix fans. You know, I, I would get... Uh, natural sweet seeds because I would make my own flour and in my own homemade flours I would also make uh, I would put seeds in with it so that the bread recipes and, and biscuits and whatever else pancakes I was putting right. together would be uh, fine enough that you'd be able to digest it easily and it wouldn't be harsh tasting so uh, do I think that this process here's a problem with with seeds if you, you try to do homemade uh, concoctions, uh, in particular, you're not really sure of uh, the combinations necessarily. I don't think it would harm you, uh, but you wouldn't have a consistent or a predictable dosage level. Uh, that, that's that's the convenience of with a product like Rain, where it's it's, it's a predictable level of dosage administration. Okay, we have a couple of questions here about the um, resveratrol. People are wanting to know how much is in soul. And, and another question that's similar says how many milligrams of the resveratrol. Well, I always have trouble saying that word. Resveratrol <laughs> um, in soul and compare that to a glass of wine. If you're looking at a glass of wine, um, anywhere from 960 micrograms of um, maybe up to a milligram of resveratrol. Uh, what I was able to measure independently was 1.78 grams or 1,780 milligrams of resveratrol uh, per dose. Uh, and is that consistent? I think the problem with the natural product is we can say that there's a minimum dosage administration uh, we can't say what the maximum dosage administration per per batch might be based upon you know how how this how much uh, oil the seed has in it and so forth. But from a, a minimal standpoint, minimal administration, I think we can safely say 1,000 milligrams of resveratrol uh, per dose administration. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Um, somebody says. Can you talk about the analysis that you did on Soul, Dr. Stan? 
kind of uh, a formulator okay. that uh, uh, put together. I have 17 uh, private label vitamins, formulas that I have in my office. Uh, 15 of them are patented under my name. Uh, two of them are co-patented with another doctor. And so the person that does the formulations for me is also a friend. And I told him, I said, I, I want to know what's in here. And specifically, I want to know as far as antioxidants, essential fatty acids, um, can you give me that number? He said, sure, send it to me. I'll let you know. And so, uh, and I paid for that test. That was, uh, those are not cheap, by the way. <laughs> When you're looking at those type of assays, that, that's, that's an expensive analysis. But I, I had to know. I wasn't going to get involved with this company unless I knew what was in it. And that was one sure way of telling. It's not that I don't trust uh, the people in the company. Uh, maybe they're being told something that, that isn't necessarily true. So I wanted to know for myself. That's just how I do things. I, I have to have the truth. Let's see, this next one, I'm not sure I'm going to say this word right. It says, compare anti-inflammatory levels of soul with um, NSAIDs, N-S-A-I-D-S. You know, I, I'd love to be able to do that, but there's no empirical studies doing uh, that type of comparison uh, as far as uh, cellular matrix. What I have proposed, and, and, and I'm trying to get the doctors together on this, who are using uh, salt with their patients, rather than trying to measure uh, COX-2 inhibitory factors, uh, I would like to measure uh, C-reactive protein levels. Uh, that, that's a, a true marker of inflammation in the body. And if we can demonstrate uh, clearly using uh, traditional medical treatment, using NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, using SOL, or brush, both will work equally well. And then using a, a, a control group that is receiving a, a placebo. Uh, and doing these measurements with large enough numbers, I think we'd be able to publish something fairly significant. But to this point, uh, the only thing we know is the raw data on the individual components, as the researchers uh, had indicated in the presentation I gave we have some great questions coming in. You can tell we have a very educated audience <laughs> on with us great. tonight. Uh, great question. We've had several people ask about what the ORAC value is, or the ORAC level in Seoul. You have to take the, the individual ORAC readings. Uh, the, the Tufts University has revamped uh, the ORAC reading, the, the, the oxidative uh, reaction readings. Uh, because when you're doing in compounds, uh, they found that the, the readings would go artificially high. And so many products that are out on the market that claim to have a 17,000 ORAC reading uh, really is kind of a false marker. Uh, so they're, they're revamping how the ORAC is, is done, and uh, we will be submitting uh, the product for individual component analysis. So if you're looking at resveratrol at 1,000 milligrams, uh, that ORAC reading is right at about 6,400. Uh, if you're looking at uh, pregenolone at 750 milligrams, uh, we're looking at an ORAC reading of probably 11,600. The last I looked, let me see, I've got it right here. Yeah, 11,600. And if we're looking at... Uh, uh, the polyphenols, uh, polyphenols don't have a high ORAC reading, but they ha have a high bioavailability rating, uh, and that is roughly 2,760 according to this chart I have. And, um, and then if we're looking at the carotenoids as a group in brain products, uh, we're looking at an ORAC reading of roughly 9,700. Mm, okay, wow. That's impressive. Here's the next question. Where can you research if the ingredients of soul have any interaction with medications? As, as a product, 
<clears throat> was sold, there, there have been no contraindications as far as uh, use with medications. In fact, the, the research on the individual components would suggest that it would only enhance uh, the, the efficacy of most uh, medications, uh, even medications regulating blood sugar, because uh, that's always been the concern. Uh, also with antioxidants, there, there have been a concern about blood thinning issues, uh, especially tocopherols and vitamin E, but the, the dosage administration on tocopherols is, is uh, not clinically significant enough to change clotting factors. Uh, or th thrombocytic activity. So uh, at this particular point, we have no contraindication based upon the individual components in the literature, and we, we see no uh, problem with the administration given uh, uh, most health conditions. You know, Rush has uh, girana, a small amount of girana, and it, not enough to uh, it's less than a cup of green tea. Uh, for people who are hypertensive, they, they may have an issue with that. So staying with the sole product is probably a, a, a better choice. But other than that, health, health indications, remember it's a food product. So it, the real question you would have to ask, uh, will eating grapes affect my health? Will eating cumin affect my health? And the answer is, is no. I'm, I'm going to chime in here, Doc, uh, with a couple of questions, but I have to limit the number of times I do this because apparently when I come in, it causes an echo. So I think it's safer with Sherry. Besides, I think she has a, wonderful, a better voice than I do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> People seem to like her, listening to her more than, more than to me. Anyway, a couple of questions here uh, that I thought were really pertinent. Is uh, uh, Rush, uh, Rush and, and, and Soul safe for children and from what age? And I'm going to ask again if you could just tell the difference between uh, Rush and Sol. Can you just give us the, what, what, what differentiates the two? Sol, the, the flagship product is, is strictly an antioxidant approach and it's if you have uh, infants who are on foods, you know, they've started with uh, fruits, uh, it's perfectly safe. It's perfectly fine. Um, there are some docs who even propose, who, who pediatricians who are into uh, integrated medicine, that that you could introduce uh, fruits and fruit juices earlier. Uh, I really don't get into that much. I leave that to an individual decision. But if you have a, if you have an infant who is starting on on foods and fruits, uh, soul is a good choice. Rush was originally designed to be a healthy replacement for those god-awful energy things out there that are, are tearing up the adrenal system of, of our youth um, because it, it does offer a, a boost of energy without the buzz and not really so much because of the guarana because there's not enough in there to make that much difference. Uh, really more from the combination of, of uh, seeds and fruit blends in there. The one that's in the packet, for instance, has dragon fruit in it, and it has a, a very unique and, for me, very wonderful flavor. I like it. Um, the the uh, <clears throat> focus issues with brush seem to be uh, much better uh, for, for kids who are uh, suffering from attention deficit or uh, even adults who are having focus issues. Uh, concentration, uh, mental acuity problems. Rush seems to be uh, the product of choice. However, if you're sensitive to caffeine in any way, uh, probably Soul is a better product choice. Back in. If someone is allergic to raspberries and they take Soul, yes, because the 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 allergy is actually, if you look at a raspberry, it's got that fuzz on the outside. Mm -hmm. That's where the, the reactions are taking place. Uh, mm. We're looking at the, the, the uh, actual uh, stem and pulp of the fruit sometimes will actually cause a reaction. The seeds themselves are hypoallergenic. Uh, there's, there's no uh, systemic irritants in them. Uh, and, the, and the chemicals 
the, the natural chemicals found outside the seed or outside the, the fruit itself. They're there for a purpose. That's, that's how nature protects it. It stops uh, certain bugs from getting to the fruit because that, that little fuzzy stuff around there stops uh, you know, insects from getting to the fruit and destroying it. Now, it's nature's way of, of setting up, uh, shall we say, an armor around it. Uh, those are not present in, in the seeds. Okay, that makes sense. This is a good question. It says, with the upcoming cold and flu season, would you suggest this product over others? I actually had two friends sick this week, so that's a really good question. Yeah, I think health is a, is a, is a comprehensive approach, and there are so many things you can do. Uh, I mean, Linus Pauling's work with vitamin C and, and the common cold and, and viruses is, is well documented and, and accepted. Uh, the use of substances, uh, beta-1316 uh, glucans is a, good, a mushroom or a yeast-derived substance to enhance the immune system. All of those things are, are powerful in, in helping our immune system. And, of course, a healthy diet and lots of, of, of organic foods and lots of water. Uh, but if you're going to add an antioxidant to this program, you can only enhance your chances of preventing a virus from taking hold, and if it does take hold, giving your body the opportunity to fight that virus more effectively. Mm -hmm. And I think the research that I cited in, in the study where the, the herpes uh, zoster on the mice was eradicated, I mean, it was totally, totally arrested. That impressed me. Mm -hmm. That impressed me very much. Sure. Yeah, I think, I think you have to use a combination of things. There, there is no panacea. There is no cure-all. Uh, when we approach health, we have to use everything that's available to us in nature uh, to fortify our body's ability to fight and to cope. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I would say a hearty amen to that, and that feeds right into our philosophy of exposing people to all of the things that they need and not just one little sliver of information. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see this next one. It says, is the taurine or taurine in rush truly safe? What is taurine from? Well, taurine comes from uh, several different sources naturally found in plants, right? Mm -hmm. uh, plants are not just carbohydrates, but they're also a uh, complex uh, of, of enzymes and proteins that hold it. That's how it stays together, that proteins form substance. Uh, so taurine is, is uh, part of that. D-ribose is also in there. And, that, and that's, it's also uh, part of that same uh, uh, complex that holds substance together. So no, if, it, if taurine is, is found naturally in the fruits, it's certainly at, at, at a, a, a very organically compatible level. Mm -hmm. Are the various products with different kinds of seeds? Yes, uh, every product uh, with within the uh, uh, grain lineup, with the exception of the, uh, uh, they they have a probiotic uh, that has an extremely high uh, colony count in it, uh, ten billion count. Uh, with, with a wide variety of, of bacteria, uh, uh, probiotic. Uh, but everything else has the, uh, the seed technology, the seed fortification within it, including the weight loss. Here's another one about the seeds, about seeds in general. It says, I wonder why our mothers told us not to eat the fruit seeds. Also... <laughs> I have heard of eating the apricot seed with caution. What are your thoughts? The problem with apricot seeds is is any seed, um, a thiocyanate is found within uh, active seeds, apricot seeds, uh, pits. And, you know, an apricot and an almond are closely related. You think of an almond as an apricot that's a birth control. It just doesn't produce the fruit <laughs> around it. Um, and, and almonds have a tremendous amount of nutrient value. The bitterness you get from an apricot seed or from a peach seed is from the thiocyanate. And it was believed at one point 
that uh, thiocyanate would be converted to uh, uh, hydrogen cyanide uh, in the presence of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Uh, I think you would have to take in a tremendous amount for that to be true because the initial conversion actually binds the, the cyanate to another salt. Uh, the conjugation takes it to either potassium or, or sodium. So uh, probably not as unhealthy as it was first touted may not be the best way to get those nutrients, mm. only because uh, the, the organic acids found in those seeds can be difficult to break down mm -hmm. and, and difficult to digest. Okay. Now, if you dry them, uh, just like an almond, right? They, they, they have the same uh, signature as far as a food product as, as the almond. What is dragon fruit? Oh, <clears throat> extremely popular in South America, Southeast Asia. For those of you on the line from Southeast Asia, you're going, I know what dragon fruit is. <laughs> it's it's, it's a, a very, you know, in the United States, we're used to having things very, very, very sweet. Uh, dragon fruit is not overly sweet, but it's highly flavorful. It's a, uh, <clears throat> grows two different ways. It can grow in a bramble. Uh, like in, in a bush or shrub type thing, and in others, other areas it grows in a vine, and uh, a, a tree-like vine, and it's uh, uh, very good. You can you can get them in specialty stores. We have a lot of Asian stores here, and I'm in the St. Louis area, and I, I can get uh, dragon fruit either fresh or, or frozen. And I love it. It's great. Alex asks a really good question. How would you approach healthcare providers with soul? What got your attention? You know, healthcare providers hurt too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, most of my friends who are I, I treat quite a few doctors. I did my appointment book this week. I had seven doctors come in for care, and you know that they, they have pain issues, or they have digestive issues, or they have all of us in healthcare have stress issues. Managed health has is, is caused us all to raise our blood pressure slightly. <laughs> so it, it's, it's like a personal encounter. <clears throat> if they feel they have a health issue and they want to share it with me, I go, you know, I've been using this stuff. Why don't you, here's a couple of packets. Try it. See if you like it. And they'll try it. They'll go, wow, you know, this really made a difference. What's in there? I said, magic. <laughs> and then we'll break it down into substance and I'll show them the things that I've looked up and studied. They get interested and they order for themselves and they share it with their patients. Mm -hmm. It's not a sales thing for physicians. We didn't go into healthcare to be salespeople. Uh, we got into it to share mm -hmm. and, and to support health and, and that's what this is about. I, I share these products with my patients and if they if they want it, they can get it on their own. And uh, you know, but but my purpose, my focus is to make them healthy. And I feel very blessed that I've come across this because uh, there there are quite a few patients that uh, have benefited. And my fellow physicians, be they MDs, DOs, DCs, dentists, whatever counselors, uh, I feel very fortunate in my relationship with them because. Uh, they feel very open to what I have to share and to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, we share quite a few uh, common interests and, and common goals for our patients. Mm -hmm. Well, we're on the home stretch. There's only a few more questions, Dr. Stan. Can you describe the scientific process by which the ingredients in the seeds have been able to help people get off pain medications? Well, as was mentioned in the studies, if you're, if you're looking at the process of, of anti-inflammatory through reduction of oxidative stress by triggering specific receptors and, and uh, lowering uh, the COX-2 expression uh, that's associated with, with, uh, with pain and inflammation, if we're looking at uh, antioxidation in general, Every antioxidant, by process of its reaction, be it vitamin C, 
be it to cough off, uh, acts as an anti-inflammatory at the same time because inflammation in the tissues is an oxidative process. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as an area becomes ionized, it becomes inflamed, the, the, the release of oxygen radicals in damaged tissues is part of that process. So by introducing antioxidation, we, we decrease that inflammatory process, decrease the associated pain. Will that uh, help people reduce their need for medication? I think it can, certainly, that there, there's a strong argument to say so. I don't think that people should do that without the advice and, and support of their doctors. They should uh, give them feedback. Most of the time, hopefully, they're receiving these products from their physician. If they're not, if they're getting it from an individual and they're taking it and they feel better, your doctor should be open to the discussion of, well, if this is working for you, I would really prefer you have a natural product that's controlling and helping with your symptoms than to take you know, a pharmaceutical. Mm -hmm. I mean, even something as simple as aspirin has side effects. Mm -hmm. if, we can, if we can take something that doesn't have those side effects, we, we have a, a greater benefit to the body. Mm -hmm. Can you compare the energy drinks to Rush and why Rush is better? You mentioned the <laughs> energy drinks. <laughs> Well, let's start with we the list. We could have a whole webinar on this. that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's just simplify it. The, the level of caffeine in most of the energy drinks is the equivalent of two cups of very strong coffee. Uh, we're talking 120 to 150 milligrams of caffeine. Talking In order to get that down, they have to sugar it up. And there is so much high fructose corn syrup. There is so much... Uh, sucrose in there that, that, and in some cases, well, I don't do that. I do the sugar-free one. Well, what's in that one? <laughs> that, that's, that's worse, I think. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a chemical drink is what we're talking about with the typical uh, energy drink, and, it, and it, it's, it's causing people to get hyped up, and it's, it's firing up the adrenal glands, and it, it, it's causing digestive stress. It's causing sleep disorders. You know, with Rush the level of caffeine is, is so minor, so small. Uh, it's, it's more the reaction of concentration. It's more the reaction of, of increased energy and vitality. If you feel better, you will have more energy. If you give the cells a higher metabolic set point, if those sirtuin-1 uh, receptors are fired and you have greater energy from taking something natural, my crush. Uh, you have no need for that level of caffeine. You have no need for that level of sugar to give you an artificial high. Is it necessary to take it on an empty stomach? No. Uh, yeah, and I know there's some, some discussion, well, if you're going to take fruit, take fruit on an empty stomach because you don't want to mix your fruits with your proteins and so forth and so on. And, and while I see there's some validity to that argument, I, I understand that and accept it. Uh, but for looking at uh, antioxidation factors, it works in harmony with the entire digestive process. I, my opinion is if you have a bolus of food, if you've taken something healthy into your body at the same time, uh, you're, you're setting up the entire digestive process and the metabolic process by introducing a wide variety of things for the body to work on. Mm -hmm. So you know, that, that increases your absorptive qualities, that increases the bioavailability of the body by introducing. We don't sit down at a meal and just typically have one thing. We eat a, a variety of things. And, and we do that almost innately in order to uh, get the benefit from the proteins, the carbohydrates, the fats that are available. Uh, and our body is used to that. That's, that's our genetic marker. So I don't think you'll hurt yourself taking it on an empty stomach. Certainly not. Okay. Uh, do I think there's advantages one way or the other? My opinion is that you probably would do better taking this uh, with food just, just from a digestive and, and metabolic standpoint. 
Well, we have one last question. We'll end with Marsha's question. It's a really good one. It says, and then I'm going to mute myself, and then, David, you can jump in. I am confused about the process of cold press. You have talked about grinding seed flour. How is it, how is that the same as the cold press process? Oh, okay. It, it's actually a dual process. Once you've extracted the, the uh, liquids and the oils from the seed, what you have left is the seed hulls, right? So the cold press process removes the, the, the as it were, the liquid extraction process. And, and then what's left over is the, the, the hull and the inner portion of the seed. That's not wasted because there are essential nutrients uh, found in those as well, not to mention the fact that, that it's the, the natural binding site for these things. So that seed pulp is then uh, made into flour. And uh, ground up, that there's, there's very little refuse uh, involved, very little waste. All right. Uh-oh, here's the echo again. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Stan, and um, this has been very, very informative. Uh, hang on just a minute. Okay. <laughs> There's a, a, had a few more comments come in. But however, uh, folks, if you still have any more questions, please contact. You want to ask Dr. Stan about it, more information. Uh, Dr. Stan, can you give your information again about Absolutely. questions? Sure. Sure. At uh, myrain.me slash Dr. Stan. And I have a mailbox there. Uh, you can just send me an email, and uh, I'd be glad to address it. Very happy to. Okay, great. And if you have questions and you, you were not referred to anybody, anyone else, if you came in through business, uh, Building Strength webinars, uh, be sure to contact uh, Kevin Moman. And I think his information has been shown a couple of times. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Dr. Stan, do you have any, f any final words you want to leave? I, I want to thank everyone with the, the Building Strength webinars. This has been a, a wonderful opportunity to share. And uh, it's been my honor and privilege to be here this evening. And for everyone who listened, uh, I, I want to thank you for spending your evening with us, and in some cases your morning with us. Um, it is a, a calling more than a profession that we do as healthcare providers because what we do, we love. We're fortunate and we're blessed. And our blessing is only good as, when we share it. And I hope you have been blessed as much as I have this evening. Thank you. Absolutely. I think we can say that for everyone. We, everyone has been blessed by this information. And, and like we, we say, we, our desire is really to bring out the absolute best, to help people see what is out there, and to, see, to know and understand that they do have tremendous options that are out there to help them improve the quality of their lives. And, and certainly, uh, this is one of them. Again, thank you. I'm echoing again, so I'm going to end this off right now and say God bless. Have a great evening.